Warning, this episode contains adult language, mature situations, sociopathic is the kind of main characters, alternate history, 1920s Germany, an offensive, omnipotent being, military jargon, and the latest manga releases. Remember to like, share, and subscribe. Listen to review discretion is advised. Hello and welcome to another episode of the Spark and Manga Review. I'm your host, Zan, saying konnichiwa, aloha, bonjour, and what's up? Hope you're doing well out there and hope you're excited for another fun-filled episode of this awesome podcast you can find at www.spirekin.com. We're also on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Spotify, YouTube, and various other social media sites. Just type in S-P-I-R-A-K-N in your search bar and I guarantee you find us one way or the other. And if you're watching us on YouTube, remember to click on that subscribe button and click on the bell for notifications for when we release new episodes. And with that in mind, let's actually get to it because today we're going a little bit more serious. We're talking about a series which makes me want to dress a little more regal a little more militaristically so let's actually get to the story at hand because it's one which is a little bit um well let's get to it shall we because if you remember from that last episode i spun that one that only the wheel of manga and it dictated to be there viewing a manga that was written by carlo zen and illustrated by chika tojo it was published by katakawa shoten and released in the united states by yen press and there is a, this is a light novel adaptation, so there are actually two versions of it. The light novel was released by a different company originally, but Yen Press is releasing the actual light novels. This was originally released in Comp Ace magazine, and originally ran there 2016 till now. It's still coming out. Also, light novel started in 2013 and is still coming out as well. There are 28 volumes of the manga, and there are 14 volumes of the light novel. And this is a Senen series that is classified as a dark fantasy Isekai military story. So this is for military otaku. There is a lot of jargon. And also this is for enthusiasts of actually kind of World War I and World War II combined. Uh, some people find this offensive because it almost glorifies Germany. But we'll get to that in a moment. The original title for this was Yoko Senki or the Military Chronicles of a Little Girl. But it is known in English simply as the Saga of Tanya the Evil. Now, Tanya the Evil is a pretty, well, let's be honest. It is a unique Isekai story where the main character is someone to actually not be a fan of. You should actually hate this character. The character is kind of monstrous. Does things which are really bad and there's a lot of issues. But let's actually get to what this character is about because... This story is set in an alternate universe where it's 1920s and World War I never happened. Also, because of reasons, there's magic instead of technology. So they've kind of combined the two. So there's rifles that shoot magic bolts. There are devices that harness magical energy. There are tanks, but they're powered by magic, so on and so forth. And this world is currently in a crisis. There is what is known as the Imperial army or the empire which was imperial germany is currently waging war with all of these other countries each one has slightly different names but it's essentially spain france italy great britain all of these people are fighting against this german army and the person who is leading this army who's helping to fight off these bad guys is a young girl who is 11 years old or actually starts off at eight years old that is tanya durgchoff She's an orphan girl who is part of the Aerial, what is it, it's the Aerial Megas Brigade. And she is a lieutenant in it. She actually is known also as the Silver Wings or the Demon of the Reich. Because she is truly monstrous. She will go out alone and decimate platoons. And she is not someone who is part of a big group. She's the person that you send in to, okay, we're escaping you're going to cover us as you go. And that is what she does. And she's kind of, well, a monster. But the truth is that this young girl who is so good and who is shot through the ranks is actually an Isekai salaryman from 2013 modern era Tokyo. And this guy was not a good person. He was in charge of firing people and he loved it. He took pleasure in people's misfortune and treated them horribly. So eventually, one person he fired had enough and pushed him in front of a train, and he got killed. Now, when he died, he went in front of a supreme being who declared itself to be God, and he acted like, no, there's no such thing. He acted very rudely about it. He insulted this being that essentially has 
his future, his reincarnation in its hands. And he said, oh, I'm going to call you being X. And was very rude in front of this divine being. And, well, let's just be honest. You don't piss off someone that's judging you. So this being says, you know what? You want to be rude? No. You, most people respected me when, when the old times. And you don't respect me, so I am going to teach you a lesson. You're going to be praying for me soon as possible. So he sends you to a world where he's going to suffer, a world where magic's more important, and eventually you, he's going to come crying and praying to being X. And this is the world that Tanya Dirk, Dirkachoff has been sent to. It is this kind of horrific situation. She is a orphan during a war where they conscript everybody. And because she has magic powers, she has been conscripted to the front line. The other element of this is that Being X has... You find this out later in the manga, about four volumes in the light novel. It's re revealed in the first volume. But Being X was so frustrated with Tanya that he proclaimed that if you die again, and it's not a natural death, you're done. You are just not, you're taken out of the wheel of reincarnation and you're just going to go into a, to hell for all the sins you have done throughout all time. So Tanya is now at the point where Tanya is like, I need to get off the front line as fast as possible by just getting enough promotions where I'm going to get a desk job and I'll be safe. The problem is that Tanya is a little eight-year-old girl who acts like an adult who is almost sociopathic, but is like the ultimate perfect military person who will salute and knows the command book backwards and forwards and knows everything and is pushing forward. So when she thinks she's looking scared and demure, she looks disappointed. And so all of the higher-ups are like, oh, she must have wanted to go to the front line. We're sorry we're going to take you out the front line. We're going to put you back on the front line because you're a true soldier. And she is hampering herself. She is sabotaging herself in this situation where it's just getting more and more screwed up. And it's her trying to outsmart being X while well, being X is manipulating the situation through various means. For example, getting her a device which is the Type 95 device which uses magic powers, but in order for her to weaponize it, she has to actually pray to God, which is kind of a... I don't want to say it's a, it feels sacrilegious, but it's kind of an uncomfortable scene when it happens. And it just... Her getting involved in this makes things more crazy. It's essentially a contest between an atheist and a god fighting for who's right and war tons of war tons of violence and not even little violence people die left and right in this story and not in pretty ways people are blown up stabbed shot and tanya she gets off on it and when we get introduced to the second main character who is her assistant who is victoria inovana visha serbo yakov who is from the quote-unquote Russ aristocracy. Um, she's a refugee who left the Russ aristocracy and is now in essentially Germany. It's a Russian who went to Germany. She's her second lieutenant and her assistant and her adjunct, essentially. And she believes that Tanya loves her troops and is trying to protect them, but in reality, Tanya's a fucking monster. There's only one person in the whole military who realizes this, and when he brings it up, they're like, no, you're crazy. She's just an 11-year-old girl. You don't have to worry about her. And he sees her do horrible things. Uh, and this is uh, Eric Rurgen. And he's the only person who knows what Tanya really is at this monster. And this is the series. The series is a military fantasy story where you're rooting for a little girl who's working for essentially the Nazis or 1920s Germany as she fights all these people to try to get out of her punishment and on the one hand if you like military conflict you'll love this every time there is mention of any military statement you see a little box show up which says this is what this means this is the this is this maneuver or this is what being boxed in a hole or here's how it affected the real world in 1930s America or during World War One, or it's a lot of military jargon which if you're military otaku you will love this story and 
I'm going to be honest, I'm not a military otaku, so this was really not my cup of tea. But more importantly, while seeing some of the magic is kind of cool, in the end, Tanya is not someone I want to root for. Let's be 100% honest. Tanya is a fucking monster, and she is a... I don't want to say a hard person, but she's someone who... She's an antagonistic character who is being, oh, woe is me, while trying to be the smartest person in the room. And then she is pushing herself to be this person. And it's a let's root for the bad guy story. And I've seen tons of those where they're really well executed and well done. This is not one of those. This is not a well executed story in my opinion. Because, let's be honest... The main character is someone who is like, oh, she's so cute. She looks like a little girl. And it's a little girl who's like a sociopath and you have a second chance to better yourself. And she's like, you know what? Instead of bettering yourself, I'm just going to get as much power as possible. This is a little mega little fucking maniac. And I am not a fan of this. Now, I know there is a huge, huge, huge fan base for this. That's why it has movies. That's why it has so many adaptations. But for me personally, this is not entertaining. This is kind of depressing and sad. It really is. And it's and unlike so many other really great violent stories I've read, this one just, I don't have sympathy for the main character. This isn't like Overlord where Ainz, you're like, okay, Ainz is Isekide and he's slowly losing his humanity because Ainz's character is essentially a walking skeleton. And that's helping him lose his humanity. It's not over time. This is someone who's being punished for it. And they're unrepentant. There's a manga that I spun years ago on the Wheel of Manga. But then I vetoed it out. Called Woodcock. It's one of my least favorite mangas of all time. I do not deny it is a beautifully done story with great artwork. But the main character is atrocious. It's about a person who essentially kills his parents goes to jail and then he's trying to get back to his sister and the whole thing is that you think oh he's going to jail because he's innocent it's like no he killed his family and he ends up becoming a street a fighter in prison and becomes the boss of the prison and then when he gets out he's just a monster and it's rewarding evilness this is let's look at it from the point of view of a serial killer and let's just champion that that's narratively i can't stand that i don't find it i, I don't find it super great there's so many better characters to, to champion but let me get into some of the other elements first off art style i love the art style in this that tanya actually looks like a little girl she doesn't look like just a girl with big you know uh cs lips which is what they do in the anime she looks really weird in the anime where she looks kind of like like i said she has cs lips meanwhile and in this one, she looks like a little girl, and you see the moments where she looks very innocent and demure, but then you see her manic phases where she is getting involved, getting bloodlust, and you see the tr dynamic between the two moments. Her transitioning from one to the other, or the moments where she gains her name of Demon of the Rhine, or when she since becomes the savior goddess using the power of Experiment 95, and she looks like an angel. The artwork in this is beautiful. The characters are all very well developed, but like I said, it's most of the characters are cannon fodder, or you really deal with just secondary characters, like the scientist who, being X, ends up infiltrating you. Being X, who essentially is being a jerk for reasons that don't really make sense, but that's what this is. So, overall, thinking about this, going over the accessibility of this, the story itself, and the fact that it is not for me. I'm going to give this, and you're going to say I'm wrong, but I'm going to give this a gift from your crazy Aunt Muriel. Okay, but forgettable. Our middle-of-the-ground rating. Because, honestly, there are a lot of great elements to love about this story. It's just, I don't like the main character, and I don't like the fact that this is kind of championing also the Third Reich. It's, they're not, I mean, they're not doing a genocide. They're not doing that, but it's essentially, hey, look at World War I, World War II Germany. Weren't they cool? It's like, no, they weren't. They were kind of assholes. They did a lot of really horrendous things. This should not be something that should be like, ah, oh, let's want it. Let's look at it. So that's my thoughts. Now, if you disagree with me, 
Please be respectful. Leave your comments in the comment section, or you can email me personally at Zan, that's X-A-N, at Spirekin.com. Just send me a message on your thoughts on if you like this, if you didn't like this. What were your overall thoughts on the saga of Tiny the Evil, the manga? Not the anime, not the light novel, the manga itself. And what are your thoughts about Tanya in general? I mean, do you think Tanya is as, well, crappy as I'm saying? Or am I just being too rude? But anyway, let's get to the random question of the episode. So the random question for this episode is going to be... uh, Do manga series focusing on World War II Germany affect you or offend you? I mean, do they? I mean, I know a lot of people who love this, and there's people who have lost families because of World War II in Germany, and they would find this super offensive. So what are your thoughts? Email me, zanspirekin.com, or tweet me at Spirekin. Anyway, with that in mind, let's actually get to the next part, which is kind of fun. We're talking about the manga releases for the week, and we've got some fun ones this week. Some are kind of crazy. So let's start off with... Akani Banashi Volume 2 has been released. Yes, the sequel of the series where someone wants to become a Ranko has been released. Next we had Betwixt. This is by Jinji Ito, his newest work. And fun fact, this is the only Jinji Ito I've seen that it is wrapped in plastic. So I'm curious, what? why is this one offensive when meanwhile something like Splinter or Gyo are not wrapped, is not wrapped in plastic? I am curious about this. Anyway, next. We have Case Closed, Volume 88. Yes, Conan is finally getting old there. He's 88 volumes old, and hopefully we'll find out what happens to him next, and maybe someday Jimmy will become an adult again forever. We'll see. Anyway, let's get to the next one. Classroom of the Elite, Horita, Volume 2. dun da dun Volume 5. Now we get a new character who actually is possessed by someone who likes to punch things. This one's kind of cool. Anyway, next. Dungeon Dive, Aim for the Deepest Level, Volume 5. Failure Frame, I Became the Strongest and Annihilated Everyone with Low-Level Spells, The Light Novel, Volume 8. I Think I Turned My Childhood Friend into a Girl, Volume 4. Kaiju Number 8, Volume 8. It's kind of cool that it's Kaiju Number 8, Volume 8, and I love that we have Kafka on the cover looking awesome and badass, and I think this is prepping for the anime, which comes out soon. Comey Can't Communicate, Volume 27. This series is still sweet and still great, and so much better than so many of those other ones where it's, oh, they have communication issues. I still love this series. Anyway, Love is an Illusion, Volume 4. My Dear Friend, Nokotan, Volume 4. My Hero Academia, Vigilantes, Volume 15. My New Life as a Cat, Volume 3. Please Go Home, Miss Akutsu. Volume 3. Remnants of Filth, Yuwu, the novel, Volume 2. Rosenblood, Volume 5, finally coming out after two years. Kind of crazy it's been taking this long. Servamp, Volume 19. The villainess who has been killed 108 times, she remembers everything, the manga, Volume 1. The Witches of Adamus, Volume 6. The World's Fastest Level Up, Volume 1. And then last and certainly not least, we have, which was released today, Cat Plus Gamer, Volume 3. Yes, the return of a cat gamer. So, those are the releases for this week from yesterday and today. And let's actually get to the top five from my point of view and from Greta's point of view. So, from my point of view, my top five are going to be Cat Plus Gamer, Volume 3, Don Da Don, Volume 5, Kaiju Number 8, Volume 8, Comey Can't Communicate, Volume 27, and The World's Fastest Level Up, Volume 1. Those are the ones I was most excited about this week. Uh, I was debating about the villainess who's been killed 108 times. She remembers everything. But I heard it's a light novel, so I may check out the light no- novel first. Now, let's get to what Greta thought. So for Greta, she kind of had the same thing that I had. She had, let's go... Uh, Cat uh, Cat Plus Gamer Volume 3 which is a good one because she loves cats so much because they're awesome then she had I Think I Turned My Childhood Friend Into a Girl Volume 4 she's intrigued by the story and I think that she'll enjoy it Comey Can't Communicate Volume 27 because she loves Comey 
My New Life as a Cat, Volume 3, which is an Izekai where you Izekai into a cat. And then last but not least, she likes Rose and Blood, Volume 5, because it's a cuter vampire story. Even though the vampires crush people into small crystals and then eat the crystals, which is really kind of horrifying on so many levels. But I digress. So which of these are you most excited about? Email me at zanspyrekin.com or tweet me at Spyrekin and let me know your thoughts. And before I forget, as usual, thank you so much for checking out this podcast. I appreciate each and every one of you. You're all awesome. Every email I get, every comment I get, every new subscriber gives me more motivation to keep doing this podcast. I'm going to keep doing this so an old man who has to read them with thick, thick glasses and a magnifying glass and large print manga. So thank you. So with that in mind, actually, before we go into the actual best part of the podcast, besides that, remember to check out our website, www.spocket.com. Remember to like, share, subscribe. And I'm going to be restarting the instagram for spirekin so that's spirekin instagram.com forward slash at spirekin now what would you prefer would you prefer me just to cover the actual titles i'm reviewing or would you like me just to have random panels for each day show up so it's like oh today we're going to talk about this random panel and just show you something kind of cool with the theme music of the series let me know email me zanspirekin.com which is pretty good. Or you could tweet me at x at spirekin.com. So anyway, let's get to it because with that in mind, let's get the part you've all been waiting for, the most popular part of this podcast. And what are we talking about? We are talking about that one, that only, the Wheel of Manga! Yes, friends, the Wheel of Manga, except no substitute. Now, what is the Wheel of Manga? The Wheel of Manga is a Wheel of Fortune with 10 slots on it. And what I've done is I've assigned a manga title to each of the 10 slots. So we're going to spin the Wheel of Manga. Whatever number it lands on, that's the manga that's in that spot. So I'm going to review the next episode of the Spark and Manga Review. And we have tons of great titles. Everything from Witch Hat Atelier, 100 Girls Who Really, Really, Really Love You, Apare Ranman, Blade of the Moon Princess, MF Ghost, Shiori Experiment, Jimmy 2 Shiori. The Summer Hikaru Died, My Stepmother and Stepsisters Aren't Wicked, Tsubaki Cho, Usagi Drop, and, well, anyway, let's see what we're, we're going to review in the next episode, shall we? Go to number one for luckiness, and... <laughs> Fingers crossed. Is gonna be Blade of the Moon. Oh no, it's a pyro. No, it was stuck over here. So it is Blade of the Moon Princess, which is a kind of cool one. Which is actually the first really released work by the creator of Spy Family. Is gonna be good. Is gonna be bad. Well, we're gonna have to wait and see. So let's find out. Anyway, as usual, hope you enjoy this episode. I'm your host Zan. I'm Gonsville. Catch you guys next time and keep reading manga. See you later. Thank you.